everybody! Today we're going to be talking about pet bedding and what is safe for your hamster versus what is not safe for your hamster. Now sometimes this can be kind of confusing because people who work in pet stores or sales associates and other places that carry pet bedding or even the manufacturers sometimes won't tell you what is actually safe versus what is not. True, some don't know anything about pet bedding and they just say what they've heard, that it's good, even though it's really not. So the manufacturers, they should know better. Moving on. So, we're going to start with pet bedding that you should not use because it's rather hazardous for your pets versus the entire cage or just the part of the cage. Either way, it's not really that safe. So, we're going to start off with cedar shavings, as well as anything cedar related, it is not a good thing. The reason why is because the cedar tree actually carries chemicals that not only cause asthma, but it also potentially could cause issues with your nervous system, both in humans and in animals. Something you don't normally see every day. But, you know, sometimes if you look at the labels, sometimes you'll see it, other times you won't. Also, anything having to do with pine. They have kind of the same similar um, chemicals as cedar do. So, in which case, it's rather toxic. Though, once again, you have people who say it isn't. You actually do the research it is. Moving on. Sawdust. Not good. Not good. The reason why that's not good is it can cause respiratory issues, it can cause respiratory infections, and it can also get into your hamster's lung and if it ends up, you know, getting too full, your hamster will suffocate and die. Moving on. Kindling dried um, pine is it's it's pine. The only difference is it's dehydrated. It doesn't have the water in it. it. Still has the chemicals. Still the same stuff. Softwood. It's actually made of pine and cedar. Lovely to know, right? I know. Then you also have your unlabeled shavings. Once again, wood in general isn't a great thing to use for hamster bedding, but specifically pine and cedar are definitely the number ones you should avoid and unlabeled ones normally are more towards pine than they are aspen other things scented beddings those aren't good they may smell nice they may look nice but for your hamsters keep in mind it's like having a room full of perfume you know it might smell great after, you know, a little while, and then past that, it gets kind of annoying. Um, sometimes you can get headaches from it, you can have issues, and it can cause respiratory issues with your hamster from being constantly exposed. Also, cotton balls, cotton fluff, uh, those are not good. The reason why is because they're actually not only a choking hazard but they can also cause blockage in your hamster that obviously cannot be removed unless surgery which nine times out of ten it does kill the hamster also a lot of times they'll just kill the hamster without too much notice because they tend to eat it some won't a lot do once again it can cause choking and it can also cause, obviously, intestinal and digestive problems and complete blockage, which is not something that you want. Other things, corn on the cob. For some reason, people like to also use corn on the cob. The only problem that mainly comes from this is, naturally, corn actually has a lot of fungal spores on it. so once it actually gets wet it can turn into a very hazardous bacteria that can cause issues 
with respiratory problems, it can cause um, pretty much a whole bunch of different things that will eventually kill your hamster because all the spores are getting into their lungs, causing, once again, infections, um, all those good things, and it'll just, it'll just make them very sick. Also, cat litter. No, that's, that's not good, especially the plumping kind is really bad for them. Obviously, if you haven't figured out by now, it, when it clumps, and if your hamster ends up getting some in its mouth, um, and it ends up accidentally swallowing it, or otherwise it can cause them to choke, it can cause blockages, and if you get the scented kind, which is even worse, because it's not even good for cats, <laughs> That can also cause respiratory problems along with, obviously, the potential of choking and blockage. Also, wool and material pieces. They may be soft, they may feel nice. If your hamster eats it or tears it apart and accidentally eats it, it can cause, obviously, blockage. It can cause choking. It's just not good. Also, straw is not a good one either, just for the fact that it can cause issues with being too, um, too pointy, it can cause it to be very uncomfortable, and it really isn't that great for uh, keeping down the smell. You constantly have to clean it out so that it doesn't get gross and icky and it also has a lot of dust and that can cause respiratory problems, infections, so on and so forth. Small rocks. I had one of my subscribers end up asking me, are small rocks safe for hamsters? You know, the kind that you use for fish. No. No, they're not. They're, they're really not. They are choking hazards and you can also get them caught in their digestive system, which obviously rocks are not digestible, and yeah, if they end up accidentally eating it and you don't know it, especially if they're not choking, your hamster could very well die from obviously having food and other things go into their system and not being able to pass. Also, untreated newspaper. I, I don't I don't know where that one came from, but you know, some people have used that on the internet, and I'm not entirely sure why. Because the ink has chemicals in it that can cause issues for your hamsters when digested. Not to mention that also it sticks to your container, you know, when it gets wet, and it's not very. It's obviously it's absorbent, but it stays wet and it gets very uncomfortable and so so forth. It's it's not a good thing to use. The chemicals are not good. Clumping sand. I I don't really think I need to go back into that detail because it's kind of the same thing <laughs> as cat litter. Uh, obviously it clumps and it will get caught in your hamster's throat if it accidentally swallows it. Um, it can cause, once again, blockages and so on and so forth because it, it clumps. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't do anything better than clump. Especially in the stomach where it obviously absorbs, you know, whatever comes in, whether it's water, so on and so forth. It clumps. Saying that's non-clumping, it's safe for hamsters to use it as, say, something to play in or something just to, you know, go, you know, bathe in, but it's, it's not good to have as your main base for bedding. Doesn't matter what kind of sand it is, whether it's play sand, which is not good either, or sand specific for hamsters, gerbils, chinchillas, so on and so forth. It's not good for your base, just for the fact that it can cause respiratory issues from constantly smelling it through their nose. Um, it also, it, it smells. It, it doesn't take any kind of odor 
out and especially like I said if it's play sand you would need to literally clean it out every single day just to be sanitary because it has no value whatsoever for potty spots such as your entire cage it's just, it, doesn't, it doesn't work and the smell is horrible trust me it's horrible also things that are able to be used but I wouldn't I wouldn't use it for certain reasons such as aspen shavings once again that's a wood shaving it's safe chemically but it can also be a choking hazard it can like I said it can cause an attraction for bugs it also has the ability to gather more dust which once again can cause issues with respiratory and so on and so forth depending on how dusty it is and it needs to be changed decently at least once a week dirt you know in the wild that's great for them to have dirt but they also have sand and they also have grass and they also have plants and they have a whole bunch of different things and not to mention a lot of space to run now when you have dirt in such a small space it can turn into mud which that's not a good thing for hamsters either because obviously it can make them cold it can cause issues with their fur um, obviously if they go to the bathroom they're going to be trailing that everywhere in your entire cage and eventually it will really not smell so great also if your water bottle leaks which sometimes they do you pretty much get a big muddy mess and it's harder to clean also if you don't get the right kind well they may be somewhat sterile but they can also carry bacterias and other germs that can cause infections in your hamsters or cause them to get sick with other things and that's not quite good obviously hay you know hamsters like to eat hay it's soft it tastes good and they enjoy making nests out of it the only problem is it's not good at keeping out smell and you have to change it daily because obviously it does get moldy and it does it does just have issues and it's just not one of the best beddings that you can possibly use and it's like I said it's it's kind of more like a treat for your hamster to eat it and to make nests out of it versus use it for their potty spots and all those other good stuff treated newspaper there's a difference between newspaper and treated newspaper treated newspaper you can normally get well I can't say normally but a lot of times pet stores depending on what kind um, will sell treated newspaper and it's safe for hamsters as well as other pets so that's always an option but once again it's it's gonna stick to your to your you know cage and it's gonna be difficult to clean especially if you let it sit one thing that I've noticed with hamsters if you let their potty spots sit doesn't matter what kind but if you let them sit for a while and the pee actually dries then it actually becomes very hard to get it off and you end up having to scrape it and just it's, it's, it's gross anyways um, hemp bedding um, it can be kind of like straw where it's tough so as long as you beat it down it should be okay but once again it sometimes can have those sharp edges which aren't as great of a fun for for hamsters but you know that happens alright now to the good kind of bedding that I would suggest that people use would be such as unscented shredded paper they carry those in pet stores 
and quite frankly it's nice. I haven't used it, but once again it's it's one of the safe beddings that don't carry the bacterias or the dust or have bugs wanting to just kind of like just kind of go for it. Um, unscented paper pulp, um, such as Carefresh. Now that I actually use, as well as um, sometimes generic, depending on whichever one's cheaper. But that honestly is what I use. Works great. Um, I have to change their potty spot maybe once every two weeks, and then I change out their actual bedding maybe once a month. Um, sometimes once every two months, depending on just how bad it is. Sometimes it's not bad at all. And they literally just go to the bathroom in their one spot, so you just kind of clean out the potty spot and call it goods. And it just, it makes it a lot easier so they don't smell it for so long. Because it, it does do a pretty good job at masking the scent, even though it's unscented. Um, other things would be unscented paper crinkles. That's really a fun word to say. Crinkles. Anyways, <laughs> it's pretty much like the things that I just described, because once again it's, it's paper related. The reason why paper, in specific, when it's kind of like pulp and plushy and other stuff like that is, it's actually easier for them to digest if they do, and it has a lot less tendency on killing them if they do. Obviously, if your if your hamsters, you know, noticeably eating just about every kind of bedding that you're putting in there and actually eating it, not stuffing it in its cheeks and moving it, but actually eating it, you know, obviously, if you eat too much of a good thing, it's going to kill you. Anyways, another good thing is um, unscented granulated type bedding. Other things would be unscented paper pellets. I'm assuming they're more like pellets and they're made out of paper. Obviously, as you noticed, everything that I did say, it was unscented. And once again, unscented is better because obviously if your hamster is smelling it all the time, you don't want to cause it to have distress. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, you got to make sure that it's just unscented so that it's not constantly exposed to that smell. And obviously, if you're choosing a pet bedding that doesn't do a very good job on odor control, you might have respiratory distress from that as well. Because obviously, hamsters are not dirty creatures. They're just creatures. You know, they have a tendency on going to the bathroom where they want. And you want to make sure that you can control the smell of it because obviously no one and no creature wants to smell its pee all day. So, with that being said, this is going to be the end of the video since I think I covered just about every single kind of pet bedding that is naturally used. I can't really think of any other pet bedding that most people would use. Um, paper towels are also, I would say, okay. I wouldn't use it for obviously the entire cage because that will be expensive. It really will. Same with toilet paper. Great for babies. When you have babies, they, the mothers absolutely go bananas for toilet paper pieces. I don't know why. Maybe because it's plushy. Maybe because it's absorbent. Honestly, I don't know. But they tend to enjoy it. Other than that, I think I covered just about everything. So, with that being said, toodles everyone!